Over to uh, my friend Hans uh, to wish you a great uh, session. So once again, uh, you can ask questions towards the end. And I'm thankful to, we have Asad Sa from NED University, Dr. Asad, welcome. So a lot of, it's a diversity of people. And this video will be recorded and it will be shared all over. And over to my friend Hans, willkommen, herzlich willkommen. Just a second, just a second. Before we share, but before we start, there is always the music before we start. And during this time, we have 31 participants with no video on. And get ready, guys. Please, please get ready. Please 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 your audio on. comes the sun it's all right and all of you guys get ready get your video on and are we ready to start so are you ready ready for take yes. off yes okay so let's start step up start with a startup pulse today is 10 5 2020 yeah today is 10 may 2020 and it's five o'clock in Bangkok. So give me five. Give me five. It's five o'clock in Bangkok, inshallah. And it is three o'clock in Pakistan. <laughs> so please raise your three p.m. fingers and raise them up as high as possible. If you stand, you can remain standing, but raise your hand in the three fingers as high as possible. And, and, and keep them there. It's tight, right? But keep them there. And now, please, you promise, as high as possible, right? And keep them there as high as possible. And now, Please raise your three p.m. fingers, the Pakistani fingers, three inch more. Mm. And as I can see, I relax. As I can see, uh -huh. this is entrepreneurship. Mm. It is about the three inch more. This is the entrepreneurship sign, the E. So what does it stand for? Let me share. What does it stand for?
The entrepreneurship sign stands for ideas, opportunities, and get it done. So what we need are fresh ideas, fresh thoughts, a lot of ideas. And then we've got to turn these ideas into opportunities, ready to launch. And then we just need to get it done. So take your three entrepreneurship fingers and put your three entrepreneurship fingers on your wrist. Can you do it? Can you feel your startup pulse? Can you feel it? Your pulse is going up. You think of your ideas or maybe you're saying, I have no ideas, I'm not innovative, I'm not creative. I say to you, with determination, you are creative, you are innovative. We can teach you how to get ideas. And feel the pulse, the pulse is going up. When you think about turning these ideas into opportunities, you can't go with all your ideas. You need to select, you need to select shared joint ideas, Share it with those who you enroll on your journey. And then you have to do it. You need to get it done. I want you to put every day, every morning, your three entrepreneurship fingers to your wrist and feel your startup pulse. If you want to have a regular heartbeat, don't become an entrepreneur we can close this session. If you want to be living with a regular hobby, it doesn't work as an entrepreneur. Feel the startup pulse every day. If you want to have a regular heartbeat in your life, uh, become a maid or a gardener or a bus conductor. By the way, in Bangkok, that's already challenging enough. Or you become a smart manager or a corporate. Or maybe you work with a BFD disease, big, fat, and dumb. And there seems to be a trend among young people today where everybody wants or feels the need to become an entrepreneur. my apologies for not academic saying you don't have to be a fucking entrepreneur so i travel to you from bangkok today to karachi to answer the question of dr shahi great people great team great iba i love to come to pakistan so who am I? Running an industrial company, I'm a brick man. And as a brick man, I'm also founder of an IT business together with my uh, brother-in-law and with Uli. And we did high-tech software for the automotive industry. We are invested in a social enterprise, a Q cafe, uh, I, I've been honorary judge in the, uh, at the labor court and state financial court and JCI senator. I'm, I love entrepreneurship education. I, I love to teach, to mentor, to coach. Well, and we are starting the Startup Pulse Thailand right now. And more importantly, your students, me too. I'm a student. Currently, I'm a doctoral student. So let's find out a bit what makes our heartbeat going up. There is a secret, a secret behind that door. There is a secret. There are gems. And let's find the gems. So what is on the other side of the door?
the largest survey on entrepreneurship in the world. And we want to do data-driven decision-making. Look at this. 30% of the adult population in Pakistan intend to start a business. Similar in Thailand. And look at that. 4% are in the early stage of the first three and a half years. Only 4%. They didn't make it from ideas, intent, to the opportunity and to do it, to get it done. We need to discover why. Should not be you. And then look at Thailand, 20% of these similar intentive, 20% of the adult population are in the first three and a half years. And why I'm talking to you today, 80%, of all startups fail within the first three and a half years. And we do not want that you are among those statistics and you don't need to. So we can teach entrepreneurship. You're, you're invited to come to Stanford. We have, by the way, 15 uh, Pakistani students and full-time students in our university. So join in for a semester or more. And look at that 20% of the adult population are running established businesses, only 5% in Pakistan. That's data. And look at that. 90% in Pakistan of the adult population are saying it's a high status to be a successful entrepreneur. And 80% are saying that's a good career choice. So we want to talk together today in this session, how to get it done. Yeah, and what I just see, you can write on my slides. Yes, you can. Please do it. <clears throat> Comment. <clears throat> Comment on the slides, please. And you can interrupt me anytime, by the way. And here is another one. Is it you? Feel the startup pulse. Feel it. Your heartbeat is going up, I'm sure. Why, why are you not among these companies? Is it because of this? Pakistan. High fear of failure rate. Thailand. High fear of failure rate. Do you fear to fail? I promise you, you will fail. But ever fail, ever try, ever fail, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. Entrepreneurship is a ridge walk. Do you think you can just pass on a secured ridge walk? Entrepreneurship is rock climbing, a ridge wall between coming up and falling down. And the key is when you're a climber, I was a mountain climber when I was young. And the key is, of course, you've got to have an idea where the top is. But most importantly, is the quality of your next grip, your next grip, your next step, your next smart step. That's the ridge walk of entrepreneurs. You had a lecture by Sarah Saravazzi, and, and there is one element which is the pilot in the plane. So how can we be the pilot in the plane? Let's look into this building block how to be a pilot in the plane. I love flying, by the way, and uh, in aviation and in, 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 in um, non-commercial planes. So 
There is a saying among pilots, every landing you can walk away from is a good landing. Fear of failure? Every landing in your company you can walk away from with an affordable loss is a good landing. And every landing you can walk away from and you can use the aircraft the next day. It's an excellent landing if the company does not crash. That's the ridge walk to be the pilot in the plane. You get ready. You move your aircraft, your company to the apron and you are up in the air and you've got to land. And how can we do this? This is the question. How can we do this? With an increasing heartbeat, of course, but how can we do it? And here it comes. This is what we learn from pilots. From climbing, I learned the quality of the next grip. From pilots, I learned one comment. If all companies in the world were airplanes, you could not walk under open sky. The companies are falling from the sky. They are not run by pilots in the plane. And here is the security system of commercial pilots in the Star Alliance, Lufthansa or Thai International, in the Star Alliance, they are using the so-called Swiss cheese model. So go to a cheese shop, buy a Swiss cheese and cut the Swiss cheese in slices. And the key problem is, if one hole goes through, that's a crash. And you have organizational factors. You have management factors. You have active failures because you're doing unsafe acts. There are some holes due to conditions, COVID. There are individual elements. So the key is not to secure in a company and have a cheese block of processed cheese. This is not existing. You have always in a company slices of Swiss cheese. And you have to put the slices together that there is not a shoot to all the slices and you crash. By the way, this is really the security system of the commercial pilots. I learned this from a commercial pilot in a Lufthansa A380. It is called layered security. And I want to touch down a little bit. What does it mean for you? How can you organize a layered security in a risk environment, entrepreneurship? So the key is that we need now a system of a layered security. And there are a lot what academic has to offer. And I say this as a practitioner for 25 years, being a late bloomer in academics. What makes a pilot? A logbook to think. A checklist to act and a layered security to survive. And then you don't need to be afraid about your fresh ideas, about your fresh thoughts, and you, you stay with intent. No, you can get the entrepreneurship sign towards turning the ideas into opportunity and launch the business, grow it, scale it. You can do it. So we need a logbook to think, a checklist to act. And you have to create with this logbook, with this handbook, your company always 
with the star pulse. A company, even if it is in the fourth generation, I was in a company in the fourth generation. You have to create your company as a fountain of youth. Entrepreneurship is art. It is art to act, as a wise man said. And now we are in sea times. So how can we act? Is it art in sea times? I, I listen to academics saying in every crisis there is a chance, in every crisis there is an opportunity. Never ever say this to an entrepreneur in this situation. Sea times for an entrepreneur. This is no customers, no credit, no cash. And don't tell in this situation anyone, hey, that's a great opportunity. But there is also truth in what academics are saying about these opportunity, because we have to search in seed times for opportunities which are overseen by others, as we in entrepreneurship times always are looking for opportunities overseen by others. And here is what a wise man said to the Corona time. Every company is coming back at the same time. What is your jump start? I, I don't want to hear complain about coronavirus times. I want not generic thoughts. Hell, oh, that's an opportunity. No, I want how you prepare now with fresh ideas, fresh thoughts for the D Day, for the day when all companies are coming back at the same time. Create your jump start today. That's it. As a wise man said, every company is coming back at the same time. What is your jump start? But what does it mean for you? It's not only to know what is this jump start. It is about that you prepare yourself. As a wise man said, the entrepreneur is the investable self. Make yourself investable. Make yourself investable to yourself. Make yourself investable to your beloved ones, to your mother, to your father, to your auntie, to your uncle, to your family, that you are investable. As a wise man said, the entrepreneur is the investable self. And this is where investors are looking at after the investor battle. Some of you guys know this, the four questions from investors. They are, how much money do you want to have? How, what do I get in return or percentage? By the way, now I know how you evaluate your company. You want to have a million dollar? You want to give me 20% of your shares? Whoops. You value your company 5 million US dollar right now? How long? How long do you need me? And what is your exit strategy? That's the question battle of the investor. This is the question battle you have to do with yourself, with the investable self. You sit on the one side and you ask, let yourself as an investor ask you how much, what in return, how long, what exit. But a battle is also that you know how you bust the battle. The investor says, how much? You says, you're saying, what is your usual investment? Your amount of money you are comfortable with from to? The investor is asking, 
What do I get in return? You're asking, what percent of shares do you usually take? How long do you want me to stay? Well, how long do you usually stay invested? Two years, four years, five years? What exit? Bust the battle. What are your usual exit strategies you're aiming for? So the first battle is done. And now we are moving on to the next. The entrepreneurship sign. Think, act, adjust. And build on experience. That's what a wise man said. Think, act, adjust. And there is Kevin. He was with you. He talked about revenue streams and he also created a company show profile. 21 positions. And this is are uh, the slices. It's not only the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas. Yes, it is, and it is much more. It is a Swiss cheese with 21 slices, the one line pitch, the business summary pitch, the management, the customer problem need, the product service value proposition, the core market segment, the sales channel strategy, the support model, the marketing strategy, the revenue drivers, the financial model, the core operations, the core activities, the core resources, the core partners, business model, the competitors, the competitive advantage, the financial projections, the key risks, and the slice. 21, what is your first smart step? The first grip, the next grip. So this is the concept, not having business planning and acting to a plan, but being in a situation where you do creation to have a lockbook, a lockbook like this company show profile, which you permanently, Think, act, and build on the experience, adjust this concept. This is layered security. And now let's, let's get a little play. You have here four building blocks, in this case of a business model canvas, whether you know it or not, it doesn't matter all academic tools you can utilize. So there is a customer segment, there is a value proposition, there are channels, there are customer relationship, and there is a revenue. Five building blocks. And you can see there play cards. A play card reach, a play card benefit, a play card dollar, a play card engage, a play card who. And now write in the chat, write in the chat right now, or talk with me and speak up. Which one, which play card belongs to which building block in the company? Type in the chat. For channels, which play card? For customer relationship, which play card? For customer segment, which play card? You can write on the screen. One of you guys just did it. So the reach to which building block? Play. We want to play benefit to which one? To which benefit? We take the benefit. To which of the five blocks belongs the benefit? Where you think about the benefit. To which one? No, the play card to the building block. Customer segment, value proposition, channels, customer relationship or revenue. To which building block belongs the benefit play card? So let me, oh, I cannot see the chat. So what is in the chat? Do we have answers and benefit to which one? 
uh, with his so you, can't, you can't see the chat may i read it for you or yeah please okay so like uh, a value proposition is benefit and customer relationship is engage revenue is dollars benefit proposition so a lot of things coming up yes and engage for customer relationships channels to engage channels to reach value proposition benefit customer relationship every person has a different perspective yeah interesting yeah and now we want to put our perspective and our perception into a order which i recommend and you might agree or disagree but what you see is the whole concept where we are looking at Sarah Saravazzi, where we are looking into Kevin Markehi, where we are looking into the network we heard yesterday by Thomas Chart, develop the role of play and the fun to do it and get your ideas with play cards ready and bring them to the right logbook entries. So here is an answer to it. So it starts with the who, it's the customer segment. It continues with the value proposition, which is the benefit. It's the channel, how to reach. It's the relationship, how to engage. It's the need, the key resources. It's the key activities, how you excel something, partners you need to help. And of course, the cost structure, which should equal. Otherwise, you cannot make profit and cannot sustain. So please take all the academic knowledge into practice by just having keywords in place on a play card and play with the play cards. Just ask yourself quietly, but with determination, the who, the benefit, the reach, the engage, the revenue streams. How do I, what do I need? How do I excel? How do I help? Who can help me? Yeah. Who am I? What do I know? And whom do I know? And the whom do I know? There you get the help. And this equals. And it all starts at one point. And I miss this in many, many presentations. When I'm asking entrepreneurs, they say, the name of my company is, or they start, my product is. No. It all starts with the customer. Four students from IBA who we provide a summer program, a benefit. How? Through online teaching in July. For whom? You, you start with a customer. So the art to act in entrepreneurship, as a wise man said, the art to act is the attitude to think with the eyes of the customers. This is the standalone sentence I always told my employees in the company. The art to act is the attitude to think with the eyes of the customer. And pick them up where they are. If they are at the train station, don't go to the airport. Pick them up at the train station and take them from where they are. And keep your cash in mind. It all starts with the customer. It all starts with your attitude to think with the eyes of the customer. Pick them up where they are and think of customer and cash. And there is another way to the play cards we are using. It is the entrepreneurship sign again by Michael Wustrom. He was kind of an orphan. And now he is the founder and owner of the largest 
touchscreen producer of customized touchscreens in the world starting with mapping and he came to us at stanford as guest speaker several times and he taught us the ace of hearts what is the ace of hearts accept challenge and power as you pick up the customers where they are you accept them as they are. You will challenge them. What is the price? Don't tell them the price. You challenge them. The price is $100 and we provide this uh, free to your um, company. Do you need a crane to unload? Challenge them. Here, everything comes in, in from negotiation, problem solving, critical thinking, and then empower the customer. If you empower the customer, you empower the sales. And the ace of hearts is the same when you're dealing with people who help. Whom do you know? Sarah Saravati, whom do you know? Accept as they are, challenge them with your questions. Ask, ask again, and continue asking and empower them and then they will empower you you have to give first to receive there is a beautiful youtube video but it's too long to show it today search for it on um, uh, chicken with rice by a thai who went to the us and she is explaining this in a wonderful video you have to give first to receive and that's the same with employees I always, always failed when I was touching down on failures of employees. It doesn't work. I always was successful when I work with the strength of people. So I'm finding the strengths. I'm not interested in the weaknesses. I'm interested in the exploration of strength in the co-creation of strength. And this is building trust to find together the gaps in the team. And then we are in search how to fill the gap. So the entrepreneurship sign, it stands also for the ace of hearts, accept, challenge, empower. And here is what Michael said, don't let anyone talk you out when times are getting tough. It is a ritual and times will be tough. Between boom and bust, don't let anyone talk you out of your idea. Develop your idea, think, act, build on experience. Don't let anyone talk you out when times are getting tough. So here I stop this PowerPoint and let's look into what it means when times are getting tough.
Mystery sound. As a wise man said, every company dies. It is only a question when. Even the largest, the oldest company in the world with more than a thousand years died. Only 0.1% become older than 100 years. Only 0.01% become older than 200 years. Every company dies. It is only a question when. And you want to become an entrepreneur? You've got to feel your startup parts every day. How do you act? The wise men taught us entrepreneurship is an art to act, but what is your smart step to act? What is your secured grip? When you are in a regular heartbeat, opportunity driven, all is going well. When the pulse is going up, you are in necessity driven decision making processes. When the heartbeat is going up, it becomes urgency driven. What if your company is close to insolvency, bankruptcy, to the sound of death? As the wise man said, every company dies. It is only a question when. When do you prepare for this? When you start the company. Remember what the investor battle said. What is your exit strategy? In opportunity driven, necessity driven, urgency driven or emergency driven situation. How do you get out and how do you not extend your affordable loss? But remember, every company dies and every landing you can walk away from is a good landing. And every landing you can use the aircraft the next day is an excellent landing. And here is the concept, the art of artisan, the art of entrepreneurship to prepare this situation when it is not all good, when it's going wrong, and you cannot use the aircraft the next day. There is a concept, and a wise man calls this concept, canvas the green leaf. Pick the green leaf. What does it mean? Picture postcard your company as an oak tree with limbs and branches and leaves. Some branches may fall apart and your oak tree is even stronger than before. It is part of the development from an early stage company in the first three and a half years and an established business, that there will be limbs falling apart, branches falling apart. This is part of continuous creation of the fountain of youth. So now picture your postcard, your company as an oak tree. Is it growing, declining, or dying? Remember, as a wise man said, every company dies. It's only a question when. So why is my oak tree dying? Sudden oak death? What do you have to do from the very beginning when you have your ideas, you turn them into opportunities? Here, here, when you launch, before you launch, you create your concepts already and you continuously create this concept of the oak tree. And how does it mean, what does it mean, canvas the green leaf, this concept? This is the concept, the next step in effectuation after being the pilot in the plane. 
it is continuously canvas the green leaf. Here is your oak tree. Your oak tree is dying. Your oak tree, your company will suffer death. But you plan for this. Look at the green leaves at the dying oak tree. There are green leaves. There are seeds. Plant them into a pot continuously that when the oak tree is dying hopefully not extending your affordable loss that you have already your seeds you have already the green leaf canvas planted in a pot you may have already founded a second company which will take over part of it you may organize your company to secure some stuff in pots. Well, I can't give you here a lecture on consultancy of insolvency, but uh, it's not allowed, right? But here is a concept which is allowed. Canvas the green leaf. This is the way to deal with potential failure. As a wise man said, Entrepreneurship is the ridge walk between boom and bust. The entrepreneurship sign stands for your attitude. Your attitude. your attitude oh wonderful feel your startup pulse every day and feel your next smart step thank you very much inshallah Sawadee great zabardast Zabardast, um, uh, my friend Hans, and uh, a lot of people, one of my team member, Madiha Latif, is, and many people are saying they want to meet the wise man. Uh, they're looking for the wise man, where he is, and how can they meet him? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe. Well, guys, you can't come to Bangkok right now, but you are <laughs> truly invited to come to Bangkok. So... <laughs> Come to Bangkok and we will guide you to this city of diversity. Wonderful. Come to Bangkok, explore Stanford University. It's a great place. Mm. It has 40% uh, Thai students, half of them from family business, 15% half Thai, so one Thai is a non, uh, one parent is a non-Thai, and 45% students from 117 countries, from Pakistan as well. We have a student Muslim club at the university and the president of the student club is a Pakistani student. Whoa. And the same, I would love to see students from us coming to Pakistan. And as Dr. Shahid said, I experienced what Pakistan is, what Pakistani people are. Great. Great hands. Uh, once again, it reminds of my, I did my master's from Bangkok Asian Institute of Technology, 92, 93, 94. It's a long way, a long time ago. It's a great place. So one of my questions is just to ask, start some questions. So you have been in Thailand for the past 10 years, I think. Uh, and so what type of entrepreneurial, what type of changes you saw in the entrepreneurial landscape in Bangkok or Thailand? Are the young people getting more attracted towards entrepreneurship or the government is doing some interesting thing? Do you see a vivid, um, clear change my, maybe, happening in the past? Maybe Uli want to step in. Uh, Thailand well, yeah. is a very entrepreneurial country. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Uli. The, the younger people are on average 
better educated than the Just a second, Oli, just a second. As I said, behind this door, there is a secret. Oh. So, Oli, please. <laughs> okay, there's another wise man, another wise woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oli, can you please? Yes. Uh, we can't hear you, Oli. Sorry? Uh, yes, now we can hear. Now we can hear. Um, uh, in Bangkok, or tech are starting up. There is a but not outside of Bangkok. Um, outside of the um, no tech, no tech, uh, maybe low tech, but no tech. Um, so still the majority of our businesses are not high tech and um, Thailand tries to get more startups in the tech industry, but it's very difficult because R&D um, is at the universities, is at some companies, uh, but it doesn't go into um, yeah, into the businesses. And there are certain angel investors who are going into, so we know someone, he's in FinTech, he's only investing into FinTech companies. And he actually um, is invested in some really good businesses using artificial intelligence for financial technology. Um, but young people, um, I think the, the trend is more that younger people start the businesses now. And we had a lot of exits of older entrepreneurs. So I think it's still, I mean, uh, are the Thai people uh, doing something in agriculture, something like agriculture, service, food, all these things also coming up? Yeah, there is also um, support from a government agency, National Innovation uh, Agency, NIA. Uh, they're actually investing in startups and helping them to innovate. Uh, mm -hmm very traditional and so they say okay the future might look different um, and this is already like, back nothing to do with the current situation so uh, okay. also going but this is very much government um, supported it's not right. that on their own we have young people like I have a student now and she's planning because the parents have a land plot and um, uh, they're having this kind of land and so she says Okay, I'm going to do something where I see a gap. Uh, so we have people who have entrepreneurial ideas, but they're also very much supported by, you know, having the bird in hand already. Mm, yes. Great. Zabardust. So one of the participants is asking a question, hands uh, and only both maybe, and she is saying that uh, the uh, sorry, it was uh, Madhya Saba is saying that. Uh, Two years ago, she started a business at a small level, but failed within two months due to lack of grit and consistency. So how can we remain consistent, perseverance in running our business? So any tip how yeah, to be persistent? Yeah. I, I just read this in the chat, and it really moves me. Okay. And why? It's not because you failed. It is about that you're saying due to lack of grit and consistency. So you're looking back and you are looking for reasons. And if you fail and you're in an emotional state of looking back and looking at influencing factors, you look at this from your view today. So my recommendation is how can we be consistent and remain consistent in business that we learn to think from today to the next step, the next grip, the quality of the next grip. This might be consistent, it might be inconsistent but it's the next grip 
you can't change the past. The past only gives you an information, but you can change the future. And with the information from the past, you are now aware that you thought or you think consistency is an influencing factor. So how can we be consistent? We start with the customer. We have a consistent communication with the customer. In this consistent communication with the customer, we always build on experience and we adjust the communication. Because if we have a consistent communication with the customer, we have a future. The customer may say, your product, now I don't want it. But the customer gives you information how to adjust. So I want you to get out of the state to think I failed. And what was the reason? Well, the reason was there have been a lot of influencing factors. It might be the one you think of today. It might be a different one. So start today and every day you consistently feel your pulse on your ideas, on the opportunity you're pursuing and how you run, how you get it done. You are very cautious when it comes to too many ideas. Select. Identify and select. Great. You may be inconsistent in developing the opportunity, but inconsistency in developing an opportunity is part of the game. It can be something positive. Example, Great. Great have a management team and you want to you want to do facebook marketing but in the management team there is none able to do it and in your smart planning there there is no expenses for a for a marketing guy on facebook there is inconsistency in your planning and this right. gives you a, an information so Try to change words which are in your mindset negative and change them into what they can be. Inconsistency gives you an idea where you can step in and act. So, great. Great. You, uh, can I? Yeah. Uh, just. May I say, uh, uh, Maria, yeah, but, uh, Madhya, uh, you did not fail. You just made experience. That's it. Great. I just, I will be, uh, so Nazia, as I was, welcome. Walaikum um, uh, uh, Nazia is the woman, is, is the president of the Women Chamber of Pakistan, Karachi. Welcome. entrepreneur. I am a convener of Women Entrepreneur Committee in FPCCI Federation. Federation Nowadays. of Pakistan. We have a friend from Somalia as well. My, my friend, mashallah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Well, Alhamdulillah. Thank you all. And I, 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 I'll, I'll take your question in a minute, Dr. Asad Arifin from NED. So, uh, just a minute, I want you to take to the animal farm. Sai Shoro, I want you to take to the animal farm in Hyderabad. Sai Shoro is there. Sai Shoro, Awaz Ariye. And you have to dance in the cow yard, but you the cow there as a poor. Salam alaikum. Sir, Jarong, take a minute, sir. वाले जा रहा हूं अंदर वाले के अंदर बाड़े के अंदर दिखाओ सबको ये साइंस शोरो जो हमारे कोर्स में है ये जीरो पढ़े में डॉक्टर असद ये क्लास जीरो पढ़े हुए हैं ही इज पार्ट ऑफ द एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप कोर्स यानी ये दिन भी आ रही है हां जी आवाज आ रही है जनाब भैंस आ रही है भैंस आ रही है भैंस आ रही है भैंस को प्यार कराओ ना जरा जरा इसके चेहरे के पास ले जाके जरा इसके साथ सेल्फी बनाना एक तो कितनी भैंस हैं आपके पास मेरे पास 6 7 भैंस हैं he has seven buffaloes or kitna dood hota hai rozana 30 kilo tempe he has 30 kilogram of milk aur uske baad aap inko kya khidmat karte ho unki rozana laate ho tayar karte ho ha karachi neer pe neer pe karachi neer pe neer laate hain aur inko tuda feed aur ye ghas wagera jo hai ye dikhate hain inko 
और ये बच्चे ये बच्चे छोटे ये मैंने बच्ची एक बोतल पे पिला के इसको बड़ा किया है बोतल पे ओह यू हैव बीन ही हैज बीन फीडिंग थ्रू अ बॉटल हैंड्स यू कैन सी दिस ये बोतल पे इसको पिला के इतना बड़ा माशाल्लाह किया है इसकी मां को डेड हो गई थी छोटी थी एक दिन की पैदा हुई थी मदर बफलो डाइट सो ही हैड टू टेक केयर ऑफ दिस बेबी बफलो एंड रेज इट अप अच्छा साइंस शोरू आपने हमारा कोर्स किया एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप का तो इसका कोई फायदा हुआ कि नहीं हुआ फायदा बड़ा मेरा ओए हॉर्स ओ वाओ हॉर्स सही है आ, इसको क्या करते हो बच्चे इससे क्या करते हैं घूमने के लिए राइडिंग यूज़ फॉर हॉर्स राइडिंग ओ ग्रेट अपने ये रोज का रहा है हमारा अपना अपनी इसकी एक दिल बहनाने के लिए बैठे हुए अपना रोजगार पिए घर के बराबर में इनको रखा शौक के लिए और अपना दूध का कारोबार है his he this is his passion and his milk business okay so just quick question aapko sai shor sahab aapko kya fayda hua ib ke course ka ko fayda hua inshallah hamara fayda bahut hua hai hamara pehle pata nahi tha to bahar ja ke hum ek koi karobar ko badhayenge aur apna karobar batayenge to badho ib karachi mein karobar sikhate hain aur bais ko batate hain isme se hamara fayda hoga bahar ja ke lenge to pata padega पहले पता नहीं था पहले जाने का और बस हैदराबाद जाम शोरू बस तो ही सेड दैट ही लर्नड हाउ टू ग्रो हिज बिजनेस फ्रॉम द आईबीए कोर्स तो साईं शोरो बहुत शुक्रिया आपका थैंक यू वेरी मच वी आर गोइंग बैक टू आई एम आपके बहुत शुक्रगुजार हैं कि आप इतनी तवज्जो से आते हैं ही लुक एट गो बैक गोइंग बैक टू हैंड्स हैंड्स प्लीज वेलकम बैक सो गोइंग बैक टू हैंड्स और कांग्रेचुलेशंस इट लुक्स ग्रेट सो देयर आर सम क्वेश्चंस एंड लेट मी Uh, try to to answer briefly. Does everyone have an entrepreneurial pulse, or are some people better off fitting in somebody else's vision? Well, you may be the entrepreneur, the shirtless dancing guy, who are taking off. You may be an entrepreneurial follower. You are following someone, and. following is an unestimated a form of entrepreneurial leadership so you can see someone with a vision and you decide that you follow look at the uh, Sheryl Sandberg she made Zuckerberg uh, Zuckerberg rich a follower mm-hmm. and followers emulate followers and there is a great TED talk on it so clearly uh it is not a quality of the better entrepreneur if you are the guy of the vision or if you are the guy to follow the key is the entrepreneurial spirit the art to act uh there is another one um Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking the 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 chat. Are you yeah, a great? I, I, I will. Re- I'll read it for you. Doctor Arafin is saying that does technology parks and incubation centers do they help entrepreneurship? Well, uh, I'll give you an example. I identify in Bangkok about two hundred um, locations calling themselves co-working space, incubation center, acceleration center. and then if i look into them more deeply there are about 20 qualified incubation centers bona fide incubation centers what does it mean it doesn't mean that the other ones are wrong but we have to understand are you just a real estate company when you are an incubation center and you are renting retail out with a retail concept we think of we works adam neumann who made it great and and the fall as well So this is the rise and fall of co-working spaces they are important they are good yet they are not supporting the entrepreneurial actions they provide an environment for them on the other hand we have incubation centers look at the y combinator the most successful incubator in the world and accelerator in the world why 
uh, combinator. Look at that story, what they are doing. Yes, it is very good because there people are supported and not taught. It's part of teaching and you move from teaching to mentoring. In the mentorship, you get trust, but then you step into tough coaching. And you need to have tough coaching. And if an incubation acceleration center provides tough coaching, well, that rocks. And then the next part is, does the incubation center, and to me, this is the most important part, does the center provide network opportunities? And here we are back in the question of um, effectuation. Who am I? What do I know? And whom do I know? And uh, that's the key question of incubation. So special economic zones, I think it's a good, good way to organize this, to, to have more attention towards entrepreneurship. Um, uh, and the incubation and acceleration uh, centers within uh, should be clearly focused. So not we are incubating entrepreneurs. No, we are incubating foodpreneurs. We are incubating artpreneurs, uh, those who want to run exhibitions or are artists and want to sell their products. We are supporting socialpreneurs, social entrepreneurs. We are supporting techpreneurs. We are supporting fintechpreneurs. So I think entrepreneurship education is moving towards fractionized entrepreneurship, implying that I think those parks will be successful who provide, who are specialized in a specific field. And by that, they are really supportive uh, uh, towards the entrepreneurs. In the end, it is not about the capacity for entrepreneurship. It's about the coping strategies entrepreneurs can develop uh, in, in, in collaboration in these parks. And it is all about co-collaboration and co-creation. So Wonderful. the answer is yes, if they are bonified. Great. There's a question from Somalia. Uh, Mr. Abdias is saying that are the, in entrepreneurship, do you really need a business plan? Well, uh, it's quite easy. Um, we, we try to uh, get an investment of uh, 20 million US dollar on the green field. We pitched this and for this we had a plan which was eight pages plus three pages Excel sheet. Very detailed, data driven. Unfortunately, it did not work out. It was too large for most of the financial partners and too little for the, for the large players. So but what you can see is of course, you need a plan, but, but not the, the plan uh, which we had years ago, 40 pages, 50 pages. No, the plan is more the logbook. I call it more the logbook and checklist. On two pages, three pages, not more, these slices of cheese, 21 positions, the company uh, list of Kevin Mulcahy, and having these slices develop data driven and adjust them again and again. So it's a working document. Entrepreneurship, if you are in the creation uh, pathway, if you step into the unknown, then just to have a plan and you think you execute this, this is management. Uh, mm. The entrepreneurship is not to have a plan and execute the plan. The entrepreneur going into the uh, um, uh, non-predictive future is creation, is co-creation, is adjusting goals. Uh, if you have a business which you can predict from the past, well, then you can make clearly business plans uh, okay. and you can execute them. So it really depends. You can't say business plans are for nothing and you cannot say dump the business plans. But what is Great. clear, you want to be the pilot in the plane. And as a pilot, I learned, I'm not starting the engine and get off. No, I pull out my checklist and then I read the first one. I know it by heart, but I read the first one. Oil pump one, oil pump one, oil pump two, oil pump two. So you need kind of checklists 
to act and then you build on experience. Yeah. Great. Because if the second oil pump doesn't work, you will not go for the next step. You stop. Oh. You check what's wrong. Uh, I think we maybe the last question we have, and then I will be just introducing few people. Uh, Fazila Bukhari, she's saying, she's asking how we can convince our family if we are a starter. As a starter, how to convince our family? Shall I do that? Fariha Gul has a question as well from Lahore. Okay, I will come to you. Yes. How to convince your family? She's a lady, yes. You need to be investable, an investable self. Your family is, need to be seen as investors. The first step is you pitch to yourself and you check, would I invest in this person? Is the person in front of me an investable self? And then the next step is you pitch as an investable self to your family. Don't think they are family, and because they are family, they have to support you. There are advantages with the family business or the family background, but there are disadvantages. So pitch to the family and look at them as if they are third person's investor. The family is an audience. They are different individuals, and you have to pitch yourself as an investable self to your family. It's Great. not about, mom, you love me, give me a million dollars. It's not. And it's not about that your family says, hey, we should support our daughter or son because it's our daughter or son. That's not a reason for a family to support your business. The reason Great. for your family is, because, is hopefully that they are the most critical people to you and this need a huge effort from you to pitch yourself as an investable self entrepreneur to your family. I hope this helps a little bit. But, but I, great. I add something because Fully. it's a lot more difficult. Can I ask a question? Yeah, abhi aapko deto. Nazir sahab, abhi aapko aapko Fariha Gul ko aur Dr. Arifin ko main mauka dunga ek ek minute ka shukriya ada karne ke liye. Oli, you wanted to say something. It is a lot more difficult for people where the parents have not a business background, uh, maybe are not entrepreneurs or even not in management. Um, if they have, for example, um, if they have a political background or something not at all related to business or entrepreneurship, I think for those kids or younger people, uh, it's more difficult. So, so I started my first business very early, but my parents had a family business. And so they understood. I didn't have to explain a lot. I mean, they were just asking some figures, but, but that's it. But if you, your mother is, your father is maybe you know, in, in a social kind of um, employment, um, it's very difficult if you come up and say, probably those kids will not actually always come up with a business idea. But I think the question is, is really important because, um, your parents, um, they have a big influence. Um, and I think Pakistan is a country where you still have strong social structures. I mean, in, in Europe, I think the kids have their own head and, and they just start. And, and I think it's more accepted in traditional, um, more traditional um, social structure. I, I can imagine it, it's difficult to convince your parents who are no option. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much. I will. Uh, there are three people who are uh, very important for me. All of them are important. Nazali Saiba, Nazali is the woman uh, president of the Chamber of Co uh, Commerce in Pakistan. And uh, Nazali Saiba, inka shukriya da karte hain. Sawal mushkil puchti hain, but sawal zara asaan sa puchte hain. Aur shukriya da kare. Inka ki inko ne time nikala mare liye. Aur ye bata de. Thank you. Thank you so much that you have given us so much time. And being an entrepreneur. Uh, I, I, I belong to a business family, but when I joined IBA, as I, uh, I ended my 
course for of an entrepreneurs uh, my thinking changes and i just choose in the entrepreneur committee in federation and doing a lot in this uh, covid 19 lockdown uh, everyone was asking that we are the sufferer if uh, the women entrepreneurs working from home like fashion designer home based cook food and uh, even planner so i have created a summer digital bazaar first time in my life on my page where there are more than 35000 of uh, fan following i said come and uh, promote your uh, items here your brands here with the discounted so you, you, we all can buy and sell and you know our festival eid is on ahead so this is a great achievement i learned by uh, iva and sir shahid and thank uh, you so much <laughs> that you, uh, you can use your uh, birds in hands and that was bells and bells that is a company of my own and i have a page of a lots of followers so i said let's create a summer digital eid bazaar and all are put, putting their items there and that is a great achievement i think we have uh, great all thank you <laughs> thank very you much so for much and thank you for saying there's one another question umar farooq is asking hands Uh, can we do entrepreneurship at the age of fifty? Can we do entrepreneurship at the age of fifty? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, there is no there is no limit, and uh, by age, uh, we call this senior entrepreneurship. And uh, there are several uh, uh, people who start a business. There is one influencing factor I want to mention. if you have been successful in the corporate and you left the corporate because you couldn't step higher up and you're gone with a golden handshake and then uh, you start your business don't think that you have an environment in a startup uh, as you experienced for many many years in a corporate so uh, uh, clearly there is no age limit uh to start a business but the key is you need young people around you oh because it is a matter of fact that hopefully you will die before them so it's a question of uh the succession in your in your business thank you the two more Lord. things we Thanks from Lord, Lahore, thank you from Lahore, uh, from Lahore we have Maria Dr Faria she is a professor of entrepreneurship thank and, you Dr Saheb uh, Thank you. Great. Jazakallah, Omar sir. Thank you. Uh, Faria Saheb is here. Faria Faria Gul is here. Ji. Uh, so, Assalamualaikum sir. Please comment or please oh, post and a thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was. From my... Oh, thank you so much, uh, uh, sir, for inviting me in this class, and uh, obviously it was a great learning opportunity. Particularly, I was interested in the gem results. Well, that was shared because uh, uh, in uh, previous slides the professors uh, have shared that uh, there are the intentions are the same uh, in Pakistani and the Bangkok uh, in youth uh, about uh, um, being an entrepreneur, but uh, the, uh, the fear of failure is uh, more higher in Pakistani institutions, uh, Pakistani youngsters. And when we go towards implementation, the Bangkok uh, students are more uh, uh, towards implementing the business and not. but the pakistani ones so uh, my question is what uh, the what is there in policies of bangkok or uh, in thai universities or in thai uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurship that the people are uh, more uh, people able to overcome their fear rather than in pakistani universities but you have seen there thank you very much great uh, i answer that because i don't know here and um uh, i think that Thailand is one of the highest numbers, and I was astonished that uh, Pakistan is very high as well. In Thailand, um, we see that the fear of failure doesn't hinder people to start a business, but certainly it hinders people to be innovative, to grow their business, to invest into something that is unknown. So they start the next meat business, the next same shop, the next same coffee shop, the next same small restaurant. um so especially the tech part and and anything that is unknown to them this this is where their fear of failure kicks in so they will not add one more employee for example because they cannot oversee it and this is where the fear hinders them and this is something where 
Um, definitely the, the in Thailand, I don't know about the fear of failure in Pakistan because it was just last year that Pakistan started participating again. But um, here in Thailand, definitely you know, innovation does not take place in most of the businesses and growth does not take place as well. And, um, but it doesn't hinder them to start the business. Great. Thailand, the fear, maybe you know, I saw some in, in the chat also, how do you overcome, for example, how do you overcome the field already? Um, this is a personal question. So, Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mama. But maybe we need some studies on it because uh, you see, uh, sometimes the acceptance of failure in a society may, maybe may more uh, more important role because when I was uh, working uh, with these students, I found that the students who failed in one or two businesses they were not allowed by their parents to do other business, and they were also uh, so uh, ashamed by the society, by the friends, by everyone that they preferred job rather than going towards another uh, venture. So maybe the society or the culture or the values or acceptance of failure may play an important role in all these things. Thank you very much, Faria. Thank you. Or uh, you want to say something, Hans? Or maybe I, no, maybe sir, I come you. to you. Okay. Uh, my friend Asim from Islamabad, he's saying that if you have, if you work within your affordable loss, there's nothing to fear. Very good comment, Asim. So uh, I, I, Dr. Abdul Jabbar, he's the Dean of the Textile Institute of Pakistan. He wants to say thanks. Jabbar Saab, you can come in and say yeah, thanks thank to our, any, any comment? Yeah, Jabbar thank Saab, Dr. Jabbar. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, He's a PhD uh, in Dr. yes. Yes, uh, uh, I'm a Dean at uh, Textile Institute of Pakistan, one of the prime institutions providing textile education. And since Pakistan uh, is a, a textile exporting country, uh, almost 60% of the tech export is uh, from the textiles, so I'm very much thankful to Dr. Shahid Qureshi and his team for providing this wonderful opportunity, not only for his audience, but for our faculty and the students as well. They are getting a benefit out of it and uh, almost 10 to 20% of our graduates, they go for their uh, own business. Some of them already have family businesses, but uh, some of them, they after being inspired from lectures like uh, Shahid Qureshi and other entrepreneurs, he always uh, invites valuable people, not only from inside Pakistan, but uh, internationally. So I'm again thankful to Hans, to Oli, Dr. Shahid Qureshi, his team, and it's a very good experience uh, attending these lectures on, through Zoom. So this uh, COVID-19 has provided uh, very good opportunity to this uh, new uh, new platform for the for the learners and for the beginners and for even for the teachers thank you very much great so uh, once again we need to thank the wise man and we thank the wise woman <laughs> and there's a wise man in everybody inside i think everybody there is something uh, uh, so hans you want to say the final concluding remarks yeah the final remark is there was one question who is the wise man? <laughs> the wise man, that's you. Oh. <laughs> that's you with your findings about yourself. Look into yourself, about others, look around you, and about and above you. So the wise man that is you when you put oh. your findings into a standalone sentence which gives pathway guidance to you every day so thanks a lot hands and uh, my dear participants we'll be having more people coming up from united states professor michael morris he is a big name in entrepreneurship he will be coming up and then more people have been uh, arranged in, in uh, uh, and uh, i'm thankful to taskin and abdullah who has been working uh, day and night with me so uh, I'm, I'm still available for the next 15 minutes. For, but many people want some information uh, regarding the course. And so I would uh, say goodbye to Hans and Oli. You, you can uh, uh, we wish you a, a great day. Uh, you know, Hans has, under, has learned some Urdu. He can say Zabadast. 
Can you say that for us? Zabardast. Zabardast. Inshallah. <laughs> so, and uh, they love Pakistani food and they love Inshallah. <laughs> so, thank you very much, uh, Hans and Uli. We conclude this session. I will be just taking a few questions. Thank you, thank you. Jadakumullah. May Allah bless you. May God bless you. Bless you.